Afternoon, everyone. My name is Temi Olukoko, and I'm a DevOps engineer at Funding Circle. So today, I'm going to give you all a very, very brief introduction to Helm charts. So if any of you have ever deployed an application to Kubernetes before, you'll know that it can be somewhat of a complicated process because you need to define and manage Kubernetes resources like pods, services, deployments, replica sets, etc. And each of these require you to write manifest files in YAML that need to be managed and maintained. So this is where our good friend Helm comes in because Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes that allows its users to easily package, maintain, and deploy apps and services to our Kubernetes clusters. But Helm is also useful for doing easy updates, creating Helm charts that can be shared easily, and also doing Helm rollbacks in order to roll back to older releases if need be. So let's take a bit of a closer look at Helm. So Helm uses a packaging format called charts, and um, these charts can, so charts are essentially a group of files that describe Kubernetes resources. And these charts can be used to deploy something simple like a memcache pod or something more complex like a full stack web application that has HTTP servers, databases, um, caches, etc. So when we deploy our charts to um, our clusters, these are called releases, and um, these can be collected and shared in a place called a repository. And if you want to take a look at some third-party charts, you can go to artifacthub.io just to kind of get an idea for some real-life third-party charts. So now we can describe Helm charts as Kubernetes YAML manifests that are combined into a single package that can be advertised to our clusters. And Helm charts are file-based, so they follow a convention-based um, directory structure, which I'll show you all shortly. So with our Helm chart, we can have like four main bits to it. Um, and so the first uh, important thing is our chart YAML file. We also have a values YAML, and there's also a um, chart subdirectory, and in the subdirectory we have any chart dependencies. If you don't have chart dependencies, then you don't need this um, subdirectory. We also have a template subdirectory as well. So uh, we can now take a look at the structure of a very, very simple chart YAML file, and this essentially describes what our package um, software package is about. And the three, um, I guess, most important bits here are your API version, your name, and the version. So let's take a closer look at the template subdirectory. And this kind of combines your Kubernetes manifest that can use values in your values YAML file. And if you need more resources, then these can be generated using the template subdirectory. So here we're looking at a deployment YAML that specifies the configuration for um, Kubernetes deployment objects. So this particular YAML actually makes use of a file called a helpers TPL file. And we can tell this because if you look at, I think, line 15, we have that line of code which is prefixed by that word include. So that's what kind of tells us it uses a helpers TPL file. And lastly, we have our values YAML, and this contains the default values for your Helm chart. Uh, what you can do is declare variables that will be passed into your template subdirectory, and you can actually override these variables, um, and this can be overridden during a Helm install or a Helm upgrade. And here we just have an example of a values YAML file here. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's all we have time for today. Um, although this was very, very brief, a very high level overview of Helm and Helm charts, uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, please do look at some third-party Helm charts to get a better idea. But yeah, thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>